Hello there, this is uh, Mr. Van Lowe, and I'm going to demonstrate here very briefly a titration. It's been a while since I've done this, so please bear with me, but I'll try to keep this video under 10 or 15 minutes. We'll see how it goes. Uh, most important piece of equipment for a titration is this guy. This is called a burette. They are glass, uh, they're glass tubes, and if you look carefully, here you can see that they have gradations, okay? And this is quite a fine gradation. So uh, between the major gradations, we have one centimeter cubed. Uh, between those, you will find an additional 10 gradations, and that means that the uncertainty of this is plus or minus one half of a tenth of a centimeter cubed. So they are quite precise measuring devices. And um, they're nice. So uh, you'll note that the end has a very narrow tip. And usually when these things get broken, it's the tip that gets broken because students are careless and they wang the tip against something and it breaks. Uh, this is called a stopcock. And this is how we open and close the burette. So uh, perpendicular, when the stopcock cock is perpendicular to the tube, that is closed, and when it is parallel to the tube, that is open. In other words, a liquid will drain out when the stopcock is open. So, uh, this device here is called a burette holder. Um, there may be a fancier name, but burette holder works for me. And our next task is to rinse the burette, okay? So uh, we're going to start by rinsing a funnel. And here I have a beaker that I have labeled waste with a board pen. And that is usually what I do, just so that I know, I know that what I'm dealing with, not just now, but later on as well. So I'm using a wash bottle to rinse out my funnel. Uh, and this is just distilled water. And we're mainly concerned about the inside, but you could rinse the outside as well. And I'm going to place the funnel into the top of the burette, which you can see. And then um, I need to raise this up slightly. And place my waste beaker underneath. So first I'm going to rinse this with distilled water. And then there's one additional rinse that we need to do. Okay, so using the stopcock is generally going to be the slow way to rinse. There's also a faster way, just by tipping it backward. And as you can see, these are really easy to uh, swing too hard. Uh, so you need to be really careful. Okay, so. I've rinsed it once, but now I actually need to rinse it with the substance that I'm going to be putting into the burette, and that is hydrochloric acid, uh, 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed. Okay, so for this maneuver, I'm going to put my funnel back into place and just close up my stopcock for a moment and pour on the hydrochloric acid. So the reason why we're rinsing it with hydrochloric acid is just to make sure that the water in here doesn't dilute the acid I put in. So I need to rinse it once, just to rinse away my uh, distilled water. So the point of this is to make sure that the substance in here is exactly 0.1 molar hydro hydrochloric acid. Okay, and that dribbles all the way out. 
Nice. And so now we fill this all the way up. And we will fill it all the way up to the zero mark. With the stop clock, stop clock closed. Okay. So I have slightly overfilled it, and that is fine, as you'll see. Um, the reason why it's fine is because there's actually an air bubble in here, and we want to get rid of that air bubble. So I need to let out some of this hydrochloric acid. The other thing is, I want to make sure that I remove my funnel, because if I don't, uh, probably difficult to see, but there are little droplets of hydrochloric acid falling into my burette right now, and that is not ideal. So it's very important that you take your funnel out. Okay, I opened the stop cock, stop cock all the way, and that got rid of my air bubble, and I still need to remove just a drop or two of hydrochloric acid. And this is the part that is tricky. Uh, because removing a drop or two is kind of a delicate procedure. So what you need to do is very carefully open the stopcock and you will see a drop form on the end of the burette. I also recommend that you hold the burette with both hands when you're manipulating the stopcock. Okay, once that drop is gone, I am at exactly the zero line, the zero gradation. So we're looking at the bottom of the meniscus, okay? You want the bottom of the meniscus. Okay, so I uh, should have removed my funnel before I did that, but we're still okay. Okay, the next maneuver, the next thing I need to do, now that this is prepared, is collect my sample. So my sample in this case is sodium hydroxide, and I do not know the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. However, I will know the volume quite precisely using this device. This is a volumetric pipette, and it measures exactly 25 milliliters. The uncertainty on this volumetric pipette is plus or minus 0.03 milliliters. So, Quite precise. I will also need to use this device. They come in many shapes and sizes, but this is the flavor that we have here at St. Mary's. Uh, so this is called a pipette filler. Again, a highly technical term. There are some valves on the pipette filler that you can squeeze to open and close it. Okay, so we are going to squeeze all the air out and then put it on the end of my volumetric pipette, making sure that it is sealed tightly. We will then uh, collect our sample. You should also rinse your volumetric pipette, but for the sake of time, I'm skipping that step. Note that the volumetric pipette also has uh, a very narrow tip and these are also very easy to break. So typically uh, when we do a practical with either of these uh, instruments, we end up with some broken glass. Not a big deal, guys, unless you are doing it constantly, in which case uh, you may be asked to provide replacements. But accidents do happen. Now, you could play around with this. Uh, but I have a different method. You would not want to do this with a concentrated acid, but it works fine with dilute acids or bases, which this is. You can just gently take your thumb off and that will release the liquid. But you need to be very careful or you will let go of too much. So again, we have a gradation here and I'm just going to drop the meniscus right on that gradation with some very fine thumb control. This does take a lot of practice. Now, you may, you may end up with a drip on the end of your volumetric pipette, and you want to dab that off, okay? 
You also want to be careful not to shake the volumetric pipette violently or that will cause some of the liquid to splash out and that is not ideal. Okay. We are now going to drain our analyte into this Conoco flask and this takes a moment. When it all drains out, you will note that there is a drop on the end and there's a little bit left in the tube. Do not try to shake that out. You will be very tempted to shake that out. Don't do it. Just dip the end into the liquid and that's it. There's going to be a little dribble in there. It's fine. It is calibrated uh, to account for that. So don't worry about it. Paper towels are always your friends during titrations. Okay, so now I have my sodium hydroxide in here, and I'm going to add an indicator. It is my favorite indicator, phenolphthalein, although it is my least favorite name or any chemical. Just add one or two drops, and you're going to get quite a beautiful pink immediately. Nice. Remember that phenolphthalein only indicates a pH of over 7 to 14. Okay, it will not indicate perfectly neutral substance, but it will indicate over 7 to 14. Okay, so my initial titration is what we call a rough titration. For the rough titration, I'm going to add about one centimeter cubed every time, and then I'm going to mix, okay? Uh, we just need to narrow down the range in which uh, we get the correct volume for neutralization. We will know that the substance is neutralized when my pink color disappears. So let's add one centimeter cubed. Carefully. Okay, that is one centimeter cubed. And after each time I add liquid, I am going to carefully switch. Okay, now we're starting to see the first visible signs of a color change. In other words, the pink color just very briefly cleared up a little bit. You probably cannot see it from that position. Uh, however, looking down, it's very apparent. So now I'm going to add probably one more centimeter cubed. Yep, I'm seeing just a little bit of clearing and now we're actually very close to neutralization. Very, very close. And yes, we have gone over the neutralization point. So what that tells us is that uh, we need to add between 20 and 21 centimeters cubed uh, hydrochloric acid to neutralize this particular solution. So for my next titration, I will go dropwise. So starting uh, from 20 centimeters cubed, I will just add drop by drop until my sample is neutralized. And in that way, I get a very precise measurement. Uh, I would say that titration would also be considered a rough titration, but this is a very, very rough titration. So following that, uh, yeah, following your drop by drop titrations, what you're looking for is concurrence, where you get the same result every time. And that tells you 
that you don't have a lot of random or systematic error and you are doing a careful titration. And that is what you want, okay? Um, so, questions or comments? Please do not hesitate to email or ask questions. Note that once we have a volume here on our known concentration, we know the volume of our uh, unknown concentration substance. So now we can just do a pretty simple calculation using concentration and volume of both substances, and we can calculate the unknown concentration. Okay, math to follow. Have a good day, guys.